What is up players, it is Warboss Tay back up in this mug wanting to show you the last figures that I painted for a recent Mercs commission done at a uh, slightly lower than Warboss level to save the client on some money. It's uh, the FCC faction, two models from the FCC faction. This is the, you've got the House Master on the left and on the right you've got the Boomer, I believe. I hope I'm not getting all my names mixed up. But these are some really cool sculpts, very tricky to put together, very fiddly. Uh, my good buddy here on YouTube, Mini Warrior, uh, you would know more than more than others, but the model on the left, the Housemaster, is a real pain in the butt to get this ammo belt going just so. And you see how it's kind of trailing out of the gun, twisting around her body there. I really could not get it to stay with the super glue. It's so fiddly because the only point of contact is right there where it connects into the gun. Couldn't do it. There's no way I could pin it because the model is so, so thin and all the pieces are so thin. I just to give you a size comparison, here is a Dante Space Marine figure. So you can see that the, uh, the pieces of the model are really thin compared to the chunkiness of a classic Games Workshop Space Marine. So in order to get the model secured and to secure the ammo belt, what I did was I curled it around the leg and I glued it right under the knee pad. So it's, it's a kind of inconspicuous way of creating the optical effect of the, the ammo naturally curving around the body as she's jumping back. But again, as a, as a hobbyist, you're kind of giving yourself a little bit of insurance by securing the ammo belt under her knee pad. And uh, again, because it's so thin, you can really play with easily curving it and twisting it around. You just don't want to twist it too much or else you might snap it. It is a thin metal after all. But the, the model is beautiful. I wanted to give her some nice bright tan armor pieces like the, the, the knee pads and the uh, little armor plate right above her boot. So uh, I, I think I did a good job with it. I also did that ivory color for her ear earmuffs or her headphones. And uh, that's just deck tan from Vallejo shaded with Agrax Earth Shade and brought back up. Beautiful color, very smooth, goes on really, really easily. I prefer it to rack art flesh, but sometimes it can be a little bit bright. So it's it's a very light color, kind of like a rack art flesh mixed with pallid witch flesh. But like I said, it goes on real smooth, very great co coverage. It doesn't clump up too much. You just thin it a little bit with water. I'm getting to like Vallejo's line more and more. Of course, because most people know me from my Games Workshop stuff, I'm gonna continue using those colors as a reference. So if you wanna get the same color, the same effect, just use Rackarth Flesh, highlight up with Pallid Witch Flesh, just add a little bit of it into your Rackarth Flesh and build up the color. The guns are a little bit different from my other Mercs figures. What I decided to do with these to make them stand out from my Chemvar as well as my USCR models, I highlighted or edge highlighted both of these guns in Runefang steel just to pick out the edges like the guns were made from a different material, a different metal that kind of glints in the sunlight on the ends, but they still kind of melt into or transition colors into a very dark iron. The pants were done with Mechanicus Standard Gray. I went for gray pants, Mornfang brown for the boots and the pouches and castellan green for the uh, clothes and the gloves. I went with blonde hair for her because she has so much hair it kind of swings around excuse me swings around her body in the back in this ponytail with a braid in it and I just thought doing her up as a blonde is a nice color to contrast with the with the gray and the green and the brown. If I'd went with a, a brunette, a dark brunette, that, that might also work. I think if you went with black, because the, the gun is black, a black hair would, would be a little bit too subdued. I kind of still want this model to pop and blonde is a nice uh, focus color to do that with. All right, beautiful model, tricky to put together, tricky to get all the pieces to look natural. And also when you <laughs> glue your model into your base, what I found was when the model was in the blister shell or when they had sculpted it or whatever, the tab, the metal tab at the bottom that slots into the base was a little bit bent. So the model actually was like leaning very, very far back. You had to, or I had to bend the model forward. That's always tricky because when the model has such a small surface area connected to the tab, uh, you have the danger of breaking 
either the tab off completely or even worse, like her, her leg <clears throat> could have been broken off at the ankle and that wouldn't be good. So let's take a look here at the boomer. Again, I decided after I painted the house master, just uh, stick with the blonde hair theme. So this guy's got blonde hair, uh, very simple blonde color, color scheme, a little bit different from my uh, preferred method, but because I was trying to get these finished as quickly as possible, it works very well. And that's basically Zandri dust with known oil, highlight back up with Zandri dust, use a little bit of Rackhart flesh and palette witch flesh in there to, to brighten up and frost the tips, I guess you could say, and then do a final glaze of Seraphim Sepia. I love how he's kind of leaning back as if bracing to fire this grenade launcher. I uh, love that his left leg is kind of, the trouser is kind of rolled up, up to his knee, and his right leg is like a bionic leg made out of, of metal and robot bits, so very cool. He's got one of those little riot masks with goggles, the kind that you see on, I guess, Army of One or Call of Duty. So I left it as, as um, flat black because I think it looks really cool contrasting with his warm skin tones to have a very inhuman looking face. The goggles I did with Mornfang Brown, then highlight up with Zandri Dust and shaded with Seraphim Sepia to kind of give a yellow glass to the yellow look to the sunglasses instead of a normal kind of like blue black. And I think it came out pretty well. Yeah, I'm very happy with this model. The skin tones were just Bugman's Glow shaded up with, or highlighted up and shaded with Cadian Flesh Tone and then Raiklin Flesh Shade. And it came out pretty pretty good. I'm really, really happy with how these models came out. The Mercs range is very beautiful. They're all single pose. You can't give these guys a different pose than what they have here and what you see them as. But really, if you're into the modeling or the painting, the, the poses work work very well. I don't know why I put her on the left. It always looks like she's aiming at him. She's not, they're buddies. Thanks for watching everybody. These are again a little bit lower on the the standard that I that I would uh, normally be painting a little bit less than a, a war boss level for just to give the client a, a discount there. Uh, these models are actually going to go to his nephew who are who is going to be using them to get into the the game war gaming mercs miniatures. So I'm I'm very very happy. It's always great to I guess introduce new players or younger players into different aspects of the hobby. I remember when I was young and I, I first saw a miniatures game, I, was, I just fell in love with the look of the models. And now with model making, manufacturing, and sculpting being so good, there is just a, a wealth of opportunity to inspire and motivate new people to get into the game and the hobby. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please write a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions on anything. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.